In the previous video, we examined the application landscape of our enterprise and the roadmap of critical applications and servers set to be decommissioned in the future. We also examined the enterprise's ability to recover from a disaster. In part two of our SOA video series, we discover if any business services are in jeopardy because they are provided by applications hosted on unsupported servers. Services that are utilized by internal or external customers rely on various applications, applications which live on physical servers. These physical servers are subject to periodic maintenance, backups, security updates, and are occasionally replaced in favor of newer, faster servers. Identifying the status of the physical servers hosting your applications aid you in preventing service disruptions, consolidate applications and data, and eliminate waste. To start, we recreate a new diagram to represent the services for our enterprise's UK operations. First, we bring all of the component categories that represent our high-level services into our diagram. We select all of the component category symbols on the diagram and build service components within them using our application builder template. Now we select all of the service component symbols in the diagram and build our services in a service component landscape diagram. These services are made available as independent services that can be accessed without knowledge of their underlying platform implementation. The concept of a service is applicable to business, software, and other types of producer-consumer models. Now we're going to run the analytics that will highlight the services that depend on applications that are on servers due to be unsupported by IT before the end of this year, 2009, and next year, 2010. These services are in jeopardy. They depend on applications that live on physical servers due to be unsupported before the end of 2010 at the latest. An unsupported server is a security risk and may also experience performance problems. If the server is decommissioned, all of its applications must be migrated to another server or they will fail. Note that the diagram will produce a key showing you the details of the color coding. Now let's open the References dialog to see what other parts, model objects, of our enterprise are connected to these at-risk services. Let's examine the retract bid service that is supported by an application hosted on a server due to be unsupported by the end of 2009. This service is about to lose its server. The retract bid service is supported by two applications, bid server and Polaris. Let's examine the bid server application to see if any physical servers that it relies on are in jeopardy. Shown here are the various model objects, servers, business processes, etc., that the bid server application is related to, that is used by, depends on, and so forth. As you can see, the bid server application is hosted by two physical servers, Superior and Le Monde. Let's discover exactly when the Superior server is due to be unsupported. This will help us prevent serious problems to our bid server application and retract bid service. 
On June 30th, the superior server support will end. After June 30th, the bid server application and the retract bid service it supports will be affected by any problem that the superior server suffers from because this server will no longer be maintained. Now let's take a look at services provided by applications housed in the United States. In this new scenario, we'll look at applications that are used by the organizational unit U.S. Operation. Then, we will build a heat map of the applications in jeopardy because the physical servers that host them are scheduled to be decommissioned by a given date. We start by adding our core components. Let's resize our components and then fill them with individual service components. Now that we have our service components laid out, let's fill them with services. We need to filter by organizational unit and select the U.S. Operations Organizational Unit to see only those applications used by the U.S. Operations portion of our enterprise. Now we see the applications used by the U.S. Operation Org Unit arranged by the service component that they support. Applications that reside on servers that are soon to be unsupported are a major concern because we don't want the business services that these applications support to be affected or disrupted by any such changes. Let's examine at-risk applications by running an analytic. Applications hosted on servers that will be unsupported by January 1, 2010 are highlighted in red. Given the urgency of these applications losing the support of their servers, let's discover which servers are due to be unsupported or shut down for the bid server application. Here are the physical servers that host the bid server application. To find out which server is going to be unsupported, first we must examine them. Let's start with Superior. This is the problem server. On June 30th, 2009, this server will no longer be supported. This may require immediate action on our part to prevent disruption to the bid server application and the business services it supports. Now we create a service hierarchy diagram. A service hierarchy diagram will better help us understand the importance and priority that our services have in relation to one another. Our service hierarchy diagram will give us a pictorial view of our services architecture that is, the component categories, service components, and services that make up an enterprise's service structure. You may create this diagram manually or let Rational System Architect build it automatically based on information in your repository. We will build a new service component with its services into this diagram automatically. We will create a new service component in the service component category auctioning and then view the entire service hierarchy for auctioning. We first create and define a new service component named online auction workflow. Under the grouping tab we specify which higher level component categories our new service component belongs to. Next we will add the multiple services that are subservient to the online auction workflow service component.
Now that our service component is connected to its high-level service component category and its underlying services, let's create a services hierarchy diagram and show the hierarchical relationship between these model objects. We select all of our service component categories and drag them onto our service hierarchy diagram. Now let's use the application landscape tool Build Service Hierarchy to automatically connect these component categories with their underlying service components and services. For each component category, the service components and their services are automatically added into the diagram. Let's take a closer look at the portion of the service hierarchy that we created. You can see our new service component online auction workflow is a member of its component category auctioning and contains all of its underlying services. Understanding how your services collaborate with each other can help you identify redundant services, service overlap, and service conflicts. Let's take a look at the auction bidding service collaboration diagram. The auction bidding diagram shows the services involved in an auction bidding scenario and the interactions between them. You connect services with service collaboration lines. Let's take a look at the place bid service. Note that the service collaboration definition provides a tie-in to business process BPMN events. Let's add the BPMN process bid received to this service component. Let's examine the line that represents the collaboration between these two services. The Volume tab holds behavior and quality of service properties. By measuring the interactions between two services, you can identify services highly dependent on communication as well as service communications that are rapidly growing. Knowing the state and nature of your services allows you to effectively plan. You create plans to control the introduction, retirement, and modification of services run by or supported by applications. You then create projects to implement your plans. When a project service plan is created, you can construct a timeline view that shows the status of a service as it changes over time. Project plans are stored as definitions in Rational System Architect. Let's open the Currency Management Project Plan. As you can see, two service plans have been added to this project. Let's compare plans, starting with the Remove Currency Management Plan. Note that Remove Currency Management is supported by the Hyperion application. The Services tab tells us that this project plan will remove the service currency management. Now let's examine the Add Currency Management Plan. This plan is connected to a different application. No checks. And this plan adds the service currency management. So the purpose of these plans is to remove the currency management service from the Hyperion application and add it to the No Checks application. Oftentimes it is possible to consolidate multiple services onto a single application. This leads to significant hardware, software, and maintenance cost savings, as well as improved operational efficiencies. See this white paper for more details. Now let's run the Service Roadmap Report. The Roadmap Report shows the intersection of services, plans, and applications. The report then creates a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet that contains a timeline view of services and applications and how they change over time. We select the Run Service Roadmap Report. Each cell contains the name of the application that provides a service. Cells colored green denote that the service is being added. Cells colored in red indicate a service being removed. You can see from the output that the application no checks was added to provide the service currency management 
by 12-1-2008. The project that is responsible for the addition or removal of a service is added as a comment to the cell in the report. This is the end of part two of this series.